time for a couple of holy mackerel stories in today's news. In the pantheon of incriminated officials from the last administration, there are three tiers of badness. There's the first tier, populated by people who were forced to resign in the dead of night due to a minor but embarrassing infraction, like, say, Claude Allen, Bush's domestic policy advisor, until he was caught stealing repeatedly from Target stores. One step above the Claude Allens of the world, it's the level I like to call, your interest is so conflicted it's amazing you can pick out shoes without consulting your former employer. That includes people like Bush's former housing secretary, Alfonso Jackson, accused of giving lucrative housing contracts in the Virgin Islands and New Orleans to friends and threatening to withdraw federal aid from the Philadelphia Housing Authority after its president refused to turn over to a $2 million property to a politically connected developer Mr. Jackson liked. That brings us to the third tier, which can perhaps be illustrated by the story of our former number three official at the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA. His name is Dusty Fago. Mr. Fago was sentenced today to three years in jail for fraud. Prior to the sentencing this morning, a number of documents relating to his case were unsealed, and so now we know more about the story. We know it goes a little something like this. For nearly three years under the Bush administration, Mr. Fago hid his years-long friendship with a man named Brent Wilkes. Why hide their brotherly love? Well, Mr. Wilkes headed a contracting company that received millions of dollars from the CIA. Who arranged those deals for Dusty Fago's best friend and vacation buddy? A man named Dusty Fago! Duh! But what's also handy to know here is that Mr. Wilkes bribed former Congressman Duke Cunningham with stuff like antiques and a boat and cash and hookers. Hot tub was involved. I would prefer not to talk about it. You can look it up. Thank you. Back to Dusty Fago here. We also learn in these new court documents that Mr. Fago arranged a six-figure job at the CIA for his mistress while his family was being housed abroad at taxpayer expense. Keep your family close and your mistress closer. Now, Mr. Fago was not just some Keystone cop. He was the executive director of the CIA, the number three guy at the CIA. He oversaw America's day-to-day -day worldwide intelligence gathering operations. And as if giving away giant government contracts to your friends and securing a job for your gal pal wasn't enough power, Mr. Fago also harbored political aspirations. He was reportedly planning a run for Congress. He wanted, of course, to run for Duke Cunningham's already totally corrupted seat from San Diego. Today, Mr. Wilkes and Mr. Cunningham both reside in prison, and so too now will Dusty Fago for the next three years. And this tier of Bush administration incriminated officials will forever be called the Dusty Fago tier. Because if your name is something like Dusty Fago, somebody is ultimately going to name something after you. Now, a little bit of good news for people who have to work for a living and people who get misty when they see those little Made in America tags on durable goods. The Russell Corporation manufactures apparel for colleges and universities, t-shirts and sweatshirts and fleeces with the emblems and mascots of those colleges and universities. All logo and official seal wholesome fun, right? Except that the Russell Corporation manufactures these goods outside the United States and has a not-so-good labor record. Last month, Russell closed a factory in Honduras in retribution for some of its employees joining a union. That is the allegation. Factory supervisors were also accused of harassing union supporters, intimidating them, and denying access to the plant for inspection. Enter to this story, the University of Michigan, which is now the latest university to terminate their contract with Russell, thanks to groups like the Fair Labor Association and the Worker Rights Consortium, who monitor this kind of stuff. Other institutions of higher learning who have made the same decision as Michigan include Cornell, Columbia, Duke, Georgetown, Purdue, and Rutgers. You know what phrase comes to mind here? Ra, ra, ra.